in terms of creating community in I guess in general in terms of expressing yourself um what would you say are your main influences like is it life is it is it personal experiences or is it more like in terms of appreciation towards the craft in terms of having a passion to create something memorable like how does it work for you in your brain i'm i'm, I'm really curious to hear that hmm. um as an artist i think that in my it, when i'm writing mm -hmm. i really try to kind of step my set the tone like of what I want to create. So if I want to write a melancholy song, you know, there's obviously the technical ways to get there, you know, via tempo, chords, uh, melody. Um, and so I try to establish this direction in my mind and I try to using my, you know, technical knowledge as a producer or as a musician, try to steer towards that ultimately with that, that goal ties back in. Like I mm -hmm. want you to, to feel this way and I have to be able to get this out of me through all of this stuff mm -hmm. out of two speakers and make you feel that way mm -hmm. or hopefully make you feel that way. But the takeaway sometimes is that, you know, people can pull different things from different songs that I never would have thought, mm. you know, there's a lot of personal uh, vibes on, on our record, uh, which is almost done. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a mix right now, but mm -hmm. there's a lot of personal vibes on that record because, you know, I've been through a lot of, a lot of hell mm -hmm. during during you know the past few years which everyone has with you know the whole covid lockdown but you know I, i lost my brother and i went through a really uh really bad breakup and so a lot of that i think came out of me almost subconsciously in the process mm -hmm. and i think that you'll hear it whenever you you listen to the whole work you know it's and it is a body of work you know it's not just uh it's not just the singles like kind of how the market is like we wanted to deliver a uh you know a solid full-length record that it, that is an experience and is a journey and i think that's that's going to kind of resonate and i think that some of that pain that i've experienced and other members of the band have gone through as well i think that's you're going to hear it firstly you know i um, really want to say that i'm really sorry for your loss and um oh no know, man i i appreciate it yeah um as a person you know i i sort of especially in the last two years I, i i've been pretty much through the same sorts of situations as the ones that um you've mentioned so uh, i can you know very much sympathize with that um yeah. and it, just about how we get it out of us you know like everybody's suffering no matter yeah. what Every, everyone's suffering somehow and it's just like what vehicle are you gonna use to deal with it or get it out of your your, your soul and uh this is just this is the way that i just kind of figured out how to do it literally you know that was my uh that was my question as well in terms of like is it is it natural for you to you know express your emotions through music does it you know does it come all, almost instinctively or um, yeah. is it something that you need to like consciously go through in terms of just oh. get it out man um and this is like more i mean it's it it is pretty much across all, you know, methods of, but live, especially it's mm -hmm. almost like I go to a different universe, you know, mm -hmm. like it, it's almost like a persona that I don't even know where it comes from, but it just comes out. I just, mm -hmm. I'm typically more of like a laid back, super chill, mild mannered person mm -hmm. in my day to day. Mm -hmm. But when I get on stage, it's just like, it, it just flows out of me, you know, and there's no experience like that. I've never been able to replicate it. I've done a lot of cool shit in my life you know, uh, but I've never been able to get those things out of me other than being on stage playing my guitar mm -hmm. and, you know, and uh, it, with people I love playing music that I love to play. Yeah, that's something, there's something so, um, I don't know, enchanting about this whole process um, that you've mentioned Matt, in terms of just, Matt. yeah, absolutely. And um I don't know. I, I sometimes feel very sorry about, you know, people not being able to experience that themselves because it's yeah. such a strong and powerful emotion. You know, it's, uh, as you said, it's like nothing else in the world, I guess. You're right about that. You yeah. know, and uh, I think that, you know, whenever COVID happened and everything shut down and people weren't able to go and experience live music mm -hmm. in whatever capacity, be it a huge concert or, Uh, an acoustic you know mm -hmm. at, at your brunch table you know mm -hmm. somebody playing in the background 
uh, I think that people realized how absolutely important it was to them and to their happiness. Mm-hmm. And now that you know, we're all co-producers got something to say. <laughs> now that we're back to uh, now that we're back to quote unquote normal, mm-hmm. um, I think people are really coming out in droves because they missed and they realized how crucial it was for uh, for that live music component because there's an energy and something that just happens that you can't you can't define or replicate it's just magic absolutely absolutely um okay um so let's move to the other part that i've mentioned i'm really curious to hear about all of your other interests especially in literature and games and um whatnot well i like i like my melancholy i'm, I'm a big edgar Allan poe fan um I like all the Tolkien stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're speaking of, you know, literature, obviously. Mm-hmm. Um, who else am I into? I'm in. I'm into a lot of uh, self-study books as well, which I think mm-hmm. you know a lot of people are these mm-hmm. days. Um, I really dig some of the perspectives of uh, Dr. Jordan Peterson. Mm-hmm. I think. Well, who else do I really dig right now? Who else am I into? Um, I'm reading Slash's book right now. Dave Grohl's mm-hmm. book was great. Mm-hmm. uh matthew mcconaughey has a book out that's awesome yeah. like yeah so so many random you know things i'll get my hands on and it's always you know going big yeah. stephen king fan stephen king oh nice um uh yeah and then so that that kind of covers like what's going on literally uh yeah. literaturally <laughs> nice <laughs> uh, <laughs> but uh but yeah so what else what else would you like to know um favorite stephen king book I'm very interested to hear that. The Shining. The Shining, nice. Oh, yeah. nice. That book is terrifying. It is. It is, to be fair. Uh, in, like, in terms of podcasts, like, what sort of topics are you into? Like, what sort of podcasts are you listening to? I do a lot of uh, health and wellness, a lot mm-hmm. of fitness podcasts. Uh, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm really into uh, diet and exercise and how you can – you know, manipulate your diet to mm-hmm. change the outcomes of your, of your overall health and well-being. Mm-hmm. So I listen to a lot of guys like, you know, Thomas DeLauer is great. Uh, Sean T actually has a great podcast. Um, who else am I into? That's great uh, for health and wellness. That's not coming to me off the top of the head. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> no, that's fine. That's fine. <laughs> that's fine. Um, I do... Uh, uh, there's okay. Uh, this guy named Dr. Sten Eckberg. He has a great health and wellness podcast. Uh, Dr. Eric Berg. He's got a great podcast. Got a great uh, YouTube channel. Uh, so yeah, a lot, a lot of health and wellness, a lot of dietary uh, augmentation for well being. Like I'll typically get into. Gotcha. And uh, like in terms of, um, you know, you mentioned video games as well. I'd love to hear your favorite ones too. Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a mega nerd and I'm, I'm like the kid that hung on to all of his stuff since he was a kid. So oh. basically I've got all of the old school NES, Super NES, Sega Genesis, GameCube, oh. Xbox. I mean, you, and I've, I've held on to my collection. So it's, it's a little ridiculous, but right now I think I'm, we, uh, we just picked up a switch for the household. So we're kind of jamming on Legend of Zelda and Metroid yes. Prime remake. So mm-hmm. That's yeah. where we're at right now. And yeah. we'll be there for a minute. <laughs> so the old school stuff, that's amazing. You know, the yeah, that. that that's fantastic. Are you into like um like comics and movies and you know uh this oh yes? Stuff? I'm a big Batman fan. Uh actually, here we go. Uh, big nice. big Batman. Nice. Uh, but uh, so I, I read a lot of the Batman comics, a huge Ninja Turtles fan as well. Those nice. are like those original Ninja Turtles comics are just so cool before it got really, you know, Saturday morning cartoony. Yeah. Which is fine because that's how that's how I initially found out about the Turtles as a kid. But yeah. Um, and then, you know, the Marvel stuff's great. I haven't really been prescribing to the movies here lately because yeah. uh, I'm in the studio and not the theater. Yeah. But uh but yeah, I, I dig all the Marvel stuff. Uh, big Star Wars guy. Mm. So if you uh, if, if if the word nerd could be attached to something, that's probably what I like. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. What do you think yeah. about the new Batman movie? Have you watched it? Uh, the newest one. Oh, yeah. it was fantastic. It was like the perfect blend of like seven, like the movie Seven yeah. with Brad Pitt. And yeah. It was like 
it had that vibe happening. It really got into Batman's a- actual detective yes. side, which is big in the comic books and has never really been exemplified in a movie. So uh, I was I was a huge fan of it. I think I've seen it like five or six times now. It, it's great. There's so much David Fincher in it, as you mentioned, yeah. the of Seven and, exactly. and Zodiac and all of that. It was, yeah, it was great. Yeah. Oh, it was just so wonderfully acted, directed. I, and I was a little skeptical about Pattinson being the Batman, but after the first like 30 minutes, I was like, nope, he's got it. We're good. Likewise. I was really sort of pessimistic towards it you know not as much as many people who are like oh this is the guy from twilight you know yeah. so I, i i knew he's a good actor but i was really not sold on him being that batman that we all wanted but yeah it was so good it was fantastic well i have never seen a second of twilight so i wasn't going in with that preconceived yeah. like mentality uh yeah. which was which was probably kind of cool um but i i thought it was fantastic i i could not have been happier with it definitely like dc or marvel well batman is my favorite superhero but i think i like the universe of marvel oh, better nice so that's tough but uh i would probably pick marvel uh even though i love batman sorry batman <laughs> i'm pretty much on the same page with you you know i really yeah. really like batman but marvel in terms of universe i guess it's you know uh yeah more close it, to myself. it's just so vast and crazy um, yeah and so with the comics and the movies yeah uh, it, 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 it's very very nice 